now. You're live. You're I'm here. here. I'm here. Hi. <laughs> I was able to get this cute babe from Bozeman, Montana to hop on a webinar with us. She's going to show you guys um, kind of the ropes of the back end of some schedulicity stuff. Yes. Hello, everybody. Um, as Elizabeth said, I'm Kelsey. I have also just been sitting here listening this whole time, and I always feel I just I love it. <laughs> I don't know. I love um, I love a supported y'all's industry. I just was at BarberCon last weekend, and um, it's awesome. It's awesome. That's what I always tell everybody. So thank you. Um, I'm excited to go through all things schedulicity. I'm going to keep it pretty high level. Um, but it really essentially goes with the theme of what you've obviously been saying is um, taking control of your time and also asking for help when you need it and being a team. So when a lot of people um, ask why online scheduling, and it's because of that. It's time. It's like, the, it's really the only thing we have to offer that's like invaluable almost, right? Yeah. Um, so that's always a big answer of mine is um, to get your time back and also just be like the most efficient that you can be so that you can double book your day and be organized and be efficient um, and have fun with your clients, but then also finish your day and know that you just crushed it and also can go be with your family, be a mom, be a friend, be whoever you're you are that you want to be after work. Um, I am also a strong advocate for picking a solution that's like best for you, right? So I always, I want it to be schedulicity, but I don't, um, you know, I, I think that's another reason, like people say why schedulicity? And it's because of that. We support our businesses so much and we want to see them succeed. And um, our CEO, Jerry, built that and built that into every all the leadership here and the product. So I just always feel like um, why Schedulicity? Well, it's because we love our businesses. We want to see them succeed. Um, and we love our product, but business um, and your success it really comes first. So I think that shows a lot um, in our product and hugely, hugely in our customer experience. Um, we're like so there for you, you know, like we've kind of planned this and we're absolutely, let's do it. Let's walk through Schedulicity and- hey guys, how many like booking programs do you think I could get on a webinar, like no problem? Like I was like, hey, will you help coach my people? They're like, fuck yeah. They said, <laughs> yes, please. They said, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know today I was like, okay, watch my mouth, watch this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, cool. So let's see. Let's see. Uh, another thing I think um, also important is price point. Yeah. So small to medium businesses um, obviously can't be spending mega bucks on booking systems, right? So um, we want to keep, we're always going to keep the price relative, but also just make it really efficient for businesses to build out, but for clients to book as well. Uh, you know, like you said, Elizabeth, it's you know, you're, if you want and you're trying to get away from texting to schedule and um, email to schedule and all this stuff, we've made it easy for y'all's clients to also just hop on board and schedule online as well. That's huge, I think. Um, cool. Okay, so I'm going to switch over actually to your account and just impersonate a little bit. I'm going to keep it really high level for everyone um, and just kind of show you what it would look like if you signed up. I'll show your business listing, how to create a service, and then you'll see what you were talking about earlier with like the card on file and deposits yeah. and all that. And just so you guys know, this account is our mock account for the sake of webinars. And so it's pretty empty. So it's perfect for us to like demonstrate stuff for you guys. Yes, yes. And, and holler with questions. Um, type them in and Elizabeth just ask away and we can go from there. Okay, so um, Essentially, let's say you log, you've created your account, you log in, right? This is your dashboard, what you'll see um, right off the bat. What I, the three areas I like to point people to the most or businesses to the most is their business listing. So this is where you'll create your name. You can have, insert your logo under change image. Um, obviously, you can attach your Facebook and Twitter, your website, and then also include y'all's industry. Um, keywords as well. Something to keep in mind here is that um, your keywords are already included in your business name. So um, yeah, just keep that open, right? Um, 
obviously more info on your listing um, about hours payments um, really quick on payments we do integrate with Square and Stripe but we also have just opened up Schedule City Pay which is really exciting um, so I'll, I'll talk about that in, t in a little in a little bit but us just okay. Okay. thrilled uh, thrilled 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 but yeah spread the word so you can share the link on Facebook which again will push your clients on where they need to book with you get yourself off text messaging question so this link is what sends them to book right yes yep this link right here so for everyone listening this is your CYA your call to action this is what you put on your like book now on your business pages and your Instagram and your links that's your CYA is where you want to go okay keep going yes um, and then what's really cool as well is if y'all have a um, Instagram business account, you can link that as well. So you can put that little book it button right in there. Yeah. And you can do that right here as well under the Instagram page. You can connect your hashtags and, and all I that. Stuff. that. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, okay. And then um, just heading over. So the second thing I like to show is the providers and instructors tile. That's, sorry, that's under settings, kind of another like home base. You'll set up a lot of your um, your, your appointment policies here, your services here, uh, payment requirements, that type of thing. Um, the providers and instructors tile, um, this is where y'all would open up um, and create what you offer. So it'll list um, all of the services that you offer, which can be different. Like if, if you have a crew and you're not just a solo provider or a solo, um, a solo person in your account, it's all here, it's all customized per, per stylist. So you'll do your work schedule, um, plan days off, any summer vacations, holidays, all that good stuff lives in here as well. Um, and then if you wanna sync any appointments or anything over to like, let's say a Google calendar or an Outlook calendar, you can go ahead and do that calendar share through here too. Oh, I love you to do that with Google too. Yeah, yeah. And of course the profile picture that your clients will see here. Um, and then if we go back into settings and into services, so we can create a new service. Otherwise, if we just head into one of these. Um, go into one of my full ones. Like one of the full ones? Okay. Like full um, color and service in here. Cool. Okay, cool. I'm just going to scoot this down a little bit. So let's say we want to make some edits to this one. This is where you can group um like all of your coloring together so let's say um full services will be red refreshes will be blue if that's how you want to categorize your calendar that's great if not that's not a problem either but you have the ability to color calendaring i think it's so awesome and statistics prove like when you're taking notes i used to work at for paul mitchell school and color coding things is actually like really awesome for your brain and helps you keep track of things so coloring i'm all about it yeah, especially if you're looking at the Schedule City Business app, it'll transfer over those colors. Yeah. You just need a quick glance at maybe what's next or what you're having for this afternoon. That's super solid. Absolutely. Um, okay. Of course, because, yeah, this payment part, it's a little grayed out here, um, but you can see the options that you have for payment. So no payment required, the hold with a credit card which will require clients to enter a credit card before they can book with you. And then once they keep booking, the system will recognize that it's in there. So it's not like they'll have to enter it every time. Um, and then you can also do the prepayment and then um, a partial deposit. Question. And, once they enter it one time for hold with a credit card, is it in there for good? Yes. Perfect. Yep. And the, if the system recognizes that like maybe it's expired, It'll prompt them to enter again, but yeah, it's like it's essentially one and done thing until they get a new car or, or it's they've, you know, canceled the card or something. Which you guys know I'm an advocate of like having people's cards on file for your late policies and no shows. Yeah, that's huge. Absolutely. Um, and then if we go back into settings, that that policies area is actually huge. Um, yeah. For a lot of businesses that sign up, especially for hair extensions, because it's like we were saying earlier, time and money is so valuable, time piece especially, um, that you can set up the general policies and appointment policies here to make sure that your clients know, um, you know, what happens if they like cancel or no show or 
anything like that. That's awesome. Can we open general policies? I just want to yeah. see. So you guys, this could take away having people sign anything. Yeah, absolutely. I think another big part of this. So what we typically re recommend um, is to turn on client text reminders as well. Because if you have like a kind of a pretty, I call it like a heavy policy where if they, if they late cancel or they no show, um, especially for those more expensive services, this is exactly where it's going to lie. Like you sent them a text message 24 hours before their appointment. They got an email reminder 48 hours before their appointment. That email reminder includes your cancellation or no-show policy, as does the email confirmation. So it can be hard, but it's the same thing. I always just push like as many reminders as y'all have, just stick to your policy because when they made that appointment, they've essentially confirmed that each time. But this is this is where that lives right here. Um, Robin, do you mean Robin asked, do you feel 24 or 48 hours is best? Do you mean like the latest that they can um, cancel or client reminders? And you can have a text sent out multiple times, right? So with this, so with this one, it's one email reminder and then one text message. But let's say your client calls in and they edit their appointment or they make a change with you. That change will then, will text them again. And it'll also text you as a provider. I feel like 24 hours before an appointment is best. What do you, what if, do you have any statistics on which one works better or do they both work good? I think they're both great. I should get used, I could probably follow up with you guys for stats on that. Um, I just, I feel like in general, email reminders are tough, right? Like how many emails do we get a day? I feel like after a while, we're just getting piled up with emails, right? So text reminders, 24 hours in advance. We also have a couple other options. Sometimes I feel like, again, for those longer appointments and maybe appointments in general, I'd say between 24 and eight hours is a pretty solid time frame. Four hours is kind of close, especially if, we, if it's for like an extension appointment, that can be a lot of time to fill, I would yeah. say. Um, someone asked a question. She said, can you choose more than one under new client policy? Do you mean more than one reminder? Is that your question, Robert? Robin and then she said like to require a credit card and new clients have to show up for their first booking oh good question so right now it's just one it's just one option under here yeah so you'll either do oh I get what you're saying choose more than one of the new client policies yeah yeah um yeah so just one option there so wait, I want to read this. Allow new clients to book online. New clients are required to show up for their first booking before they can regularly book online. See, that's what I would choose, you guys. Um, require new clients to enter their credit card. See, I would enter their credit card once they come and then book them, which that's not hard to do, correct? No, that's not hard to do at all. And if at all, but if you're checking that, if you're saying that second one, new clients are required to book online before they can continue booking and your service requires hold a credit card, you're sort of negating that second option. You know, it like sets you up better, really. Oh yeah, so no. like basically they come in yeah. and then I put them on my list and they have, or I put them on the books, they have to have a credit card on file. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, and for me, this is the thing, I feel like people are really hesitant to put down a credit card just to come meet me for a consultation. I feel like that's like a big ask. Do you agree? Yeah, I think so, especially because, um, I mean, they don't, it's a consultation, right? We're just like having a conversation. So what's cool there is each service is, is, has its own settings. So for consultation, 30 minute consultation, no payment required. And then for every other service that you have, it can be the deposit, it could be paying full, it could be whatever. Just because you have one service or a bunch of services that require a payment ask, you can have some that require no payment ask. Okay, so you can choose that per service. Yes, yeah. Okay, that just answered someone else's question. So yep. Robin asked, I just switched my clients to 48 hours, should I leave it? So Robin, I would experiment and see if there's a difference and ask your clients in real life, like, hey, does one help you more than the other? And I think that's the best way to survey it. And then Kalina said, can you choose different options for the different services for deposits required? Yes, you can, correct? Yep. And then, 
like extensions is half or just card on file? Yes, you can. What I would say with that, Kalina, is I keep my, this is just my personal way to do it, but what I love about all of this is you can make it whatever the hell you want, is I have the same leap policy and no show for everyone, which is in your guys' modules, but if someone's gonna book extensions, I take a in-person payment from them in real life, not through like, a, a on card file like I charge them like okay let's say you're gonna get you know two bags of hair in your head that's a $500 deposit or one bag it's a $200 deposit so I take that payment from them differently just because I have to order the hair right that cost you so I wouldn't have that automatic I would just have it something you charge them for you know if they're at the consultation before that and just have your policy set up but maybe you do want to have a bigger no-show charge if they don't show up for extensions than color. That's up to you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that's a good point. And especially because you can customize um, payment requirements, right? So for those more expensive processes, maybe your deposit is more, right? Your deposit requirement. But then that deposit is the no-show fee, right? So if they don't yeah, show up, yeah. then you just keep the whole thing. You don't have to worry about charging half of their deposit and giving half of that deposit back or whatever. You just, that deposit is their commitment to you. And part of your no-show is saying, sorry, you, you don't get it back. Yeah, I love that. Because then you don't get it back or it goes towards the service. So they're going to want to show up. Right. And that, the appointment on the... Um, the appointment details when you're checking out that client, it'll it'll subtract that deposit or whatever payment was made, um, so you don't have to worry about losing track or or not knowing how much has has been paid in your book. That's awesome. I love that. Cool. You guys, is this app rad? <laughs> I think so. Um. Okay. So the next. So I just am, I I'm gonna get too into the weeds because I just love this thing. Um. But I think. Two features that I wanted to mention, um, and one of them, Elizabeth, you had asked about as well, but that's our automated marketing. And this, this is huge. This is awesome. This is also about like making the most out of your time and just being as efficient as you can. Um, with a, uh, automated marketing includes email marketing. So this is essentially like what we can say is like a set it and forget it, right? So. You can send out custom emails, um, which would be you going in here, clicking a new email, typing out the email, uh, which is great. Maybe you're going on maternity leave or vacation or whatever, and you just want to update all of your clients about something. You can do that right here in custom emails. Um, otherwise, we do birthday, thank you, time to book, and re-engagement emails. And this is the set it and forget it part. So if, you have, um, if you're collecting your clients' birthdays, and you want to send them every client yeah exactly yep you just turn on and then they'll just go every single month and then with with all of these um automated emails you'll get some analytics behind them right so how many emails are being sent how many emails are you um are you getting services from same with time to book and re-engagement so every time you're sending out this like mass email group email essentially you're gonna like get revenue you're gonna gain more clients you're gonna kind of get them again re-engage with you without having to sit at your computer for hours creating email lists and creating all this stuff like it's already in there they have a schedule now button right from that email it's it's awesome it's really cool um, and then the second coolest thing I feel like that we've done in a long time is schedule city pay which is huge um, we just announced it last week at BarberCon and um, we'll be in full force here, I'd say like uh, beginning of July, mid-July for everybody. But um, essentially how that started is we really just wanted to be able to offer less processing fees, right? Um, we tried to negotiate with Square and Stripe and I think it was just tough and we decided let's just kind of do our thing and do it, do it on our own. And again, really putting the expenses and like heart for our businesses to make sure that they're being successful is again just being able to pay less and afford what you're doing right of being able to afford uh to love you know doing hair and, and all these all these things and creating relationships so anyways we'll schedule the city pay um 
an in, in person transaction or a card present transaction is 1.99% plus 10 cents. And then a card not present transaction, so those times where you're taking a deposit for an appointment um, at the time of their booking, or maybe you're just charging that card on file, that's just 2.85% plus 25 cents. So still less, um, I wanna say still less than everybody. Those are um, the only two fees you'll ever see. It's gonna be 1.99% plus 10 cents and 2.85 plus 25 cents, which is pretty exciting, yeah. So how do people get, like, how, how can everyone watching, like, can they get it in July? How do they sign up for it? Absolutely. So um, right now, if y'all, I mean, really, you can sign up for a free account. Um, you'd go to schedulec.com, click list my business. Again, you can sign up and create your account as fast or as slow as you'd like. And once you're in the system, you'll be getting all, you'll be getting all the updates. So I'd say that's the best option. Hop on, sign up for a free account, slowly get going if you'd like. Otherwise, um, just send us an email, support at schedulesd.com and um, we'll answer any questions and, and just make sure you're, you're ready to roll. Hey, I have a few questions for you. Yes. Um, I think you should talk about the fill my book thing because I think that's really cool. Okay. Will you just kind of show them that? And then I have some questions coming in. Yeah. People are asking. Yeah, no worries. So film, film my book is actually is, is super cool. And again, part of the um, automated marketing. So film my book, essentially, you can turn on or pause at any time. And film my book, each Sunday, we'll look at your day or look at your week to see what kind of gaps you have in your day and will automatically create deals based on the parameters that you've set um, to put out into Schedulicity's marketplace. So for all of the clients and everyone in your area that uses Schedulicity, um, they'll put these deals out and just, and, and run them and publish them automatically to fill the gaps in your day. So let's say maybe you only have like two providers that you that maybe need new clients or that like really need to kind of ramp up their um, their start. Fill my book is a great option for that. You can pick how many providers. You can pick which services. You can pick how many um, how many deals or how many appointments per week um, can fit onto a calendar, and then um, the the percentage off of a service that you'd like as well. And these are paid, these are paid in advance as well. So, um, you have to give a percentage off. what's that? You have to give a percentage off. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You just do like a max discount. Okay. That's awesome. So this is like when you guys have a gap in your day and you want to fill it. So you're not just like losing money. This is that tool. Or if you have a gap in your week or whatever, you're a salon owner. Um, like I see everyone posting on Instagram, I have an appointment tomorrow for this, this, and this, text me, DM me. This is like so much more effective. Email marketing is so much more effective. Like it's insane. So, right. and I love that it's integrated. Um, okay. I do have a few questions, Kelsey. Yes. I'm getting, okay. I'll take this one. Chantel said, what do you do with the deposit if they have to reschedule? Wouldn't they have to charge for the next appointment set up? No. So I would just keep the deposit. Um, if it's set up like automatically and they reschedule, does it just transfer? That's a really good question. Yeah, it's a good question. So I would think it would. Right. So right now is how to how, the best way to describe it is that the deposit is tied to the appointment. It's not tied to the client. So let's say that they do need to reschedule. So it's not tied tied to like the client's profile. So if they do need to reschedule with you. Um, I feel like typically those appointments can get pretty detailed, right? So um, they would just call you to reschedule and then you just move that appointment from that calendar block to the next calendar block. That way that deposit will stay with the appointment, you know what I mean? Would you drag it or can you just edit the date? You can edit the date or drag it. Okay. Whatever is easier for you. Yeah. And the reason behind that, we didn't want, and same with um, like we don't automatically process the refunds if someone cancels within your policy. We just wanted to leave that up to the business, right? We didn't want to make any assumptions on any type of appointment or anything like that. So um, still, I just always say that any appointment that's tied with a deposit or a hold of a credit card is pretty, I mean, that's important, right? So I would, I always just recommend talking to your clients and, and scooting that appointment to the new date. 
Yeah, I love that. Okay. Someone asked um, how transferring clients over, um, like if they're on Vigaro or they said other things, if they want to switch, does it include her formulas and notes? Does she have to enter it to start over? How does that work? Yeah, yeah. Good question. We do we do lots of transfers every day, every month. So um, I, the easiest way to do that is to export your client list and then send it over to us and we can import it for you, no problem. Um, and then I would, I recommend from our system, you can send out one of those custom emails to y'all's clients and say, hey, working on switching over to Schedulicity, um, I'll be transferring all of your appointments over to the new calendar. So if you get any appointment confirmations, you know, not to worry, you're still booked with me, but just bear with me as I'm making the changes. Um, and in that client list import, we can do first name, last name, um, email, phone number, so the normal contact information. And then in that notes field is where we suggest to our businesses to put those formulas in, um, to put any, any client notes, really. It's, I wanna say it's like 3, 000, a 3,000 character limit. So maybe you want like their most recent appointment history or you know last six months worth of appointment history. Um, and then those, those appointments that are on your calendar now and on your books now will have to be a manual transfer um, just because it's what the, the two systems don't talk to each other, right? We have like different- I don't know any of them. Yeah. Transfer it. So just to clarify, formula notes and the actual appointments you'll have to do manually, correct? Yes, yep, yep. And what I, so I've transferred, I think I've done four programs. I've tried a lot of programs. Um, is I kept both for like a month and I put all their schedule and stuff on the new calendar, but didn't like send them stuff until it was yeah. fully transferred. That's what I did. Yeah, brilliant. Then when the, the new one, which would be scheduled to see is all ready to go, then you boom. And yeah. so, um, yeah, it's a little bit of a pain in the butt always. It doesn't change anything, yeah. but it's just, it's like I always say, like you're investing that like money to get more money or investing that time to get more time. Um, I just think, I mean, we obviously think schedule is awesome. Like make sure it's what you need. And if it is, then it's worth it. Um, the one thing I would say, I have a thought on formula notes. So I think it's great that you write things down. We were always taught to do it. I had to do it at Paul Mitchell. I'm actually not a big believer in formula notes because I formalize, I formulate based on what a canvas is this time. And it's going to change every time based on the water, if they're swimming, their shampoo and conditioner, how it's faded, where they want to go from here. So I'm not a big believer in formulating because I might use a 5N on someone this time, a 4N the next. So that's my personal scoop as a colorist. But so I would say don't stress. But if you have formula notes for years, it might freak you out for a minute to do that. Um, okay, next question. Does that help your question, Robin? Uh, and then, okay, Kalina, if I want to keep my current pay system, which is not square, but it's something else, can I do my deposit and no show changes through my banking system, or do I have to use the Schedulicity pay part? They can use whatever they want, right? Yeah, you can use whatever you want. It just wouldn't be integrated with us, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to do the deposits, um, if do you do it through Schedule City Pay or Square, but then if you want it, when you're ready to like charge them in person for the rest of the amount, you can do that through whatever you're doing now. But if you want to keep track and require the deposits or the hold CCs, it would have to be through Schedule City Pay or Square or Stripe. Okay, but it could be Square or Stripe, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. Square, Stripe, or Schedule City Pay. But Schedule City Pay has better rates, correct? Yes. So it's kind of... Yeah. No brainer. And you know what? Switching processing payment systems is not hard at all. We've done it so many freaking times. We have so many different businesses with different ones. Like we have And it doesn't delete your account, you know? It just yeah. you can use both. You know, I mean, yeah. Yeah, and it's not hard for your accountant. It goes in and out of the same account. Like it it really doesn't matter. Right. Um okay. She said, that's awesome. Okay, also, do you have the desktop and iPhone? An iPhone? I literally just switched two months ago and I'm afraid my clients are gonna kill me. Um, Robin, do you mean desktop and iPhone like schedule C can be on both? If so, yes. Yeah. Uh, how much, okay. Robin um, asked, she said she missed what she just said. So you can use the schedule C app 
with other payment portals like Square, Stripe, or Schedule C Pay. If you use something outside of that, like PayPal or whatever, um, you can still use it. You'll just have to like do it yourself outside of it, like run it. But if you want it to be integrated with like the deposits and all that, it has to be Schedule C Pay, Square, or Stripe. Um, how much is an account for one stylist? So for one stylist, so we base it on, on tier pricing, right? So um, unlimited bookings is $20 for one, and that includes Schedule City Pay. And then if you're going to do unlimited bookings, plus I always suggest also pairing that with the text message reminders, so $25. Um, and then there's just different features, right? So it just depends on, you know, what you're looking to add. But I'd I say to everyone in my program having text and email marketing on. That yes. Is. Yeah. So email marketing is $25. Unlimited bookings, including schedule city pay is $20. And client text messaging reminders is $5. So if you guys are signed up with another email marketing system, it's not cheaper and it's not necessarily integrated. You're going to have to integrate everything over. I know this because we do email marketing for three different things for different business stuff. Um, all the tools you need as a service-based provider or educator are here. Unless you are like dealing unless you're selling, honestly, unless one of you like has a product brand or something bigger than that, then you don't need a stronger email marketing service. The reason you would need a stronger email marketing service is if you are like speaking to tons of people on different topics all the time and you need to segment your list. Is there segmenting available on your list at all? Yeah, absolutely. So you can do, um, let me open that screen. That's cool, you can segment lists here. That's actually really powerful. Yeah, so let's say we'll create a new email. We'll go to this to field to change our to list, our contact list. And you can do it off quite a few options. So right off the bat, it's just your to your entire client list. Um, you can do custom, so you'll choose individually who you want to add it to. You can do it by package expiration, postal code, birthday, last scheduled, never scheduled, um, by clients by tag. So you could have group of groups of clients that are tagged with different things. Um, back. This is plenty strong for anyone on here. This is awesome. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty nice. By provider, so if y'all work in a group, like, um, you can only, if you only want to send them to, to me as a stylist or a list, maybe only Elizabeth's group of clients, um, you can do that as well. So for, so by provider, that's awesome. Um, scroll up to custom. Do you, can you put anyone in that group? Like it could be the girls who work in your salon, right? So custom would mean it would just show you the, your client list and then you would exclude the people that you wanted to exclude. Got it. Got it. Cool. Which could be helpful too if you don't want your family seeing something you're sending out. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Um, I completely just, okay. You guys, was that super helpful? Can I see some like, Party hands or something. Tell me how that was for you. And if y'all have any questions, call us or you're panicky about switching over. I get that. We talk all the time to people that are switching over. And it doesn't have to be a rush. Just call and our team is seriously kick ass. Yeah. Ask us anything. I love them. They're incredible. We'll just talk. We'll talk for an hour. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Just call us for yeah. sure. So I gave them the email, support a schedule with C. Is there a phone number? Yes. What is it? It's 877-582-0494. Okay, you guys heard it, and I also put it in the chat. Yeah, call us, call us, call us. write it down just because I get asked. And like I said, sign up for a free account. You can mess around in there set up fake appointments, just see if you like it. See if you like the feels and ask us questions from there too. Happy to talk about workflows and, and all the details anytime. Yay, thank you so much. Oh, so thank you. This for us. Yes. Thank you, everyone say thank you. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes, thank you, Snap, thank you. Come join us, it'll be fun, I, I promise. You'll love it, you'll love it, you'll love it. <laughs>
Okay, you are the best. We appreciate your time so, so much. Yes, thank and you. Yeah, we're going to go over to our hot seat. So I'm going to switch you to a panelist. You can stay or leave. That is up to you, but thank you. Bye, yes, thank you.